Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with the ultimate mashed potatoes. That's right, this is dedicated to everyone who's posting a no-fat or low-fat mashed potato recipe for the holidays. Please, food gods, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Because not only are holiday table mashed potatoes supposed to have butter in it, they're supposed to have a ridiculous amount of butter in it. So that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. But fair warning, what you're about to witness can never be unseen. But if you think you're up for it, let's get started. And one huge tip here, make sure you get potatoes that are the same size. All right, all three of these potatoes were just over a pound each, which means once I trim them, I'm gonna have about three pounds of potatoes to work with, which is gonna make about eight generous portions. And then once those are peeled, we're gonna quarter them. And to do that, we'll cut it in half. And by the way, if the potato tapers a little bit, always cut the tapered end a little longer. See that? I didn't go exactly in half. All right, that'll compensate a little bit for the difference in girth. So we'll cut them in half, we'll cut those halves in half. And that's a pretty good method for getting even sized pieces. By the way, in our original mashed potato video, we cut them in half lengthwise, but we've updated. And then once those potatoes are cut, we're gonna rinse them very thoroughly. In fact, you may have noticed a little dirt on my fingers when I'm peeling and cutting those. I only rinse my potatoes once. Because you have to rinse the starch off when they're cut anyway, why bother rinsing them before you peel them? That's like doubling your work. And yes, it was a long way to go to explain that little spot of dirt on my finger. Okay, so once those are rinsed thoroughly, we're going to drain them and dump them into our pot of cold water that we're going to generously salt, by the way, like very generously. So our ultimate mashed potatoes are actually going to start off seasoned, and we'll go ahead and bring that up to a boil on the highest heat possible, and then we'll adjust our heat to maintain a nice steady simmer, and we'll cook these until perfectly tender. And since that's going to take a little while, we can go ahead and prep our butter. And I hope you're sitting down, because that's how much we're going to use. That is one pound of European butter, also known as the expensive butter. But it is gorgeous, very low water content. It almost has a clay-like texture. But anyway, we're going to take a pound of butter, we're going to cut it up in chunks, and it's very critical this butter comes up to room temperature. It would be perfect if this butter got up to like 60, 65 degrees. And I'm not sure if you've crunched the numbers yet, but yes, we're doing a 3 to 1 ratio, 3 pounds of potatoes to 1 pound of butter. And I realize that sounds completely insane, but on the blog post I'm going to explain why that's not only not insane, but it is an incredibly rational and absolutely reasonable thing to do. So please check that out, especially if you're a fan of airtight arguments. All right, so our butter's prepped, and we'll head back over to the stove to check our potatoes, and we really want these to be tender. All right, so carefully check with a spoon and a knife. That knife should go in with almost no effort. I mean, there's just nothing more evil than mashed potatoes with chunks of uncooked potato in it. Yes, worse than Satan, way worse. So we're gonna make sure these are very tender, at that point, we're going to drain them very thoroughly. We don't want any water in here. And yes, if they've been cooked enough, they're going to collapse like that. That does not mean they're overcooked. That means they're perfectly cooked. All right, so we're going to dump in our very well-drained potatoes. We're going to turn our heat onto medium-low. We definitely want to keep some heat under this. And we're going to start mashing with a wire potato masher. All right, check it out. Accept no substitutes. The old wire potato masher. Nothing works as good. And during this first phase, all we're doing is breaking them up. All right, there's no butter, there's no milk. Just go around until you think they're mashed. Oh, and by the way, one of the great things about having this much butter in the recipe, you don't really have to worry about overmixing. Okay, so do not be concerned you're overworking this. It's going to be perfect. All right, so after that initial mashing, we'll go ahead and dump in some pepper and some salt. And we're going to adjust the seasoning later, but I know I'm going to need some. And we'll also throw in about a quarter of the butter chunks. And we'll go ahead and mix that up with the masher until the butter just about disappears. And by the way, do not forget throughout this entire process, your heat is on medium low. We want to keep everything nice and hot. Don't forget that butter's only room temperature. And once that first addition of butter is mashed in, we're going to switch to a wire whisk. We're going to dump in another quarter of the butter. We're going to mix that in with the whisk. When it almost disappears, add the next quarter of butter. And simply repeat until all the butter's gone. So in a way, this is almost like we're doing a butter sauce where we're mixing in the butter and it's kind of emulsifying in. And you'll notice when you get down to that last addition of butter, things are getting really light and creamy and awesome looking. And then when that last addition of butter is whipped in, we're going to go ahead and finish this with just a splash of hot milk, just like a quarter cup. I microwave mine. And that's just going to lighten up and loosen things up just a touch. And we'll give that one last whipping. And at this point, you're really, really going to want to grab a fork. Not only to taste one of the most delicious things in the history of the universe, but you have to taste and adjust the seasoning at this point. Listen to me now and hear me later. If this does not have enough salt, it will not taste good. All right, so mine was almost perfect, but it did need a little more salt and the obligatory shake of cayenne. And once that's mixed in, we can go ahead and turn off our heat and serve. So go ahead and transfer those into your tater bowl. Do not garnish with anything except possibly a few chives. And that's only if you're taking pictures. This needs absolutely nothing, especially if you're serving it as part of a big holiday meal. 
And yes, when you bring that to the table, people will be thinking, hmm, those mashed potatoes aren't white, they're almost butter colored. Uh, it's probably just the light. I'm sure it doesn't look that way from insane amounts of butter. Oh, but it does. And seriously, one taste and it will all make sense. It is just beyond description. And there's a reason all those Michelin star chefs make their potatoes this way. Because they're just so above and beyond what we usually enjoy as mashed potatoes, that they almost become another type of food. Some kind of butter potato hybrid. Potato? Actually, let me work on that. So if you're into enjoying and sharing with your guests a proper bowl of mashed potatoes this holiday season, I really hope you give these a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy! Enjoy!